Welcome to our worship here at Ridgecrest United Methodist Church in the high desert of California. I'm the Reverend Wesley Elmore, the pastor here, and I'm glad that you're joining us on this first Sunday of January, the first Sunday of the new year. I'm joined today by our tech team of Amy and Scott. Our musicians are Patrick on piano. We have Rob and Heidi on flute, Ted on guitar, and we're joined by Amber as our singer today. You can follow along with the order that was sent out in our email, um, or you can just watch on the, the TV screen that is there and to follow along in the order of worship. And so it's a, uh, a cold uh, morning here in our high desert. Um, the new year is young, so it's certainly the coldest morning of the year, but I think it's probably the coldest morning of the winter we've had so far. Um, but it's a beautiful day here, and I hope wherever you, you are watching, either live or later today, it's, there is beauty and glory in your surroundings as well. Would you join me in prayer as we open our time together? Let us pray. Oh, holy God, as we begin here in our locale with the 
the minutes after dawn. It's also the dawn of this new year. And we are grateful that we can join together to set aside some time at the start of this year as we start this week and to give you praise and glory and to acknowledge the ways that you work and move in our lives. So we cherish this time together and we cherish the love that you have for us as we praise your name. Amen. Our opening hymn is Blessed Be the Name. Our scripture reading is uh, one selection. It comes from Psalm 147. Hear the word of the Lord. Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God. For he is gracious and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcast of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars. He gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. 
His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the downtrodden. He casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God on the lyre. He covers the heavens with clouds and prepares rain for the earth, makes grass grow on the hills. He gives to the animals their food and to the young ravens when they cry. His delight is not in the strength of the horse, nor his pleasure in the speed of a runner. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, in those who hope in his steadfast love. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion, for he strengthens the bar of your gates. He blesses your children within you. He grants peace within your borders. He fills you with the finest wheat. He sends out his command to the earth. His word runs swiftly. He gives snow like wool. He scatters frost like ashes. He hurls down hail like crumbs. Who can stand before his cold? He sends out his word and melts them. He makes his wind blow and the waters flow. He declares his word to Jacob, his statues and ordinances to Israel. He has not dealt thus with any other nation. They do not know his ordinances. Praise the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise the Lord, for he is worthy of praise. Psalm 147 is just one of the ways that praise is outlined and articulated. And in the book of Psalms, there are many, many more. But praise the Lord is a frequent expression that is found throughout the Psalms. Now, praise and thanksgiving are intertwined, of course, and certainly in the Psalms. We might make the distinction that in thanksgiving, we give glory to God for what God has done. In praise, we give glory to God for who God is in himself. And so we say, say thank you to the Lord, or to the year that has passed, and we say praise you to the Lord for the year that is ahead. We might think of taking our writing tablet, whether it's paper and pen or our electronic tablets, and we, we begin with a new sheet or we wipe the slate clean, thinking of the old days of a, of a chalkboard, because it is a new year, it is a new start, it is a new beginning, and in this beginning we begin with praise. We praise God because it is the new year. We praise God because we are actually, as you can tell by the, the ornaments and decorations around me in our sanctuary, we're still in the season of Christmas, the second Sunday after Christmas. It is the ninth day of Christmas when you think of the 12 days of Christmas. So we praise God because we are still rejoicing over his gift, Jesus. The psalmist, besides praising the Lord in this particular psalm, in the book of Psalms, ends with the, the final five chapters of Psalms are all praise related. I think of it as that final impression that we're supposed to be left with in the Psalms, the sense of praising God. It's kind of like a a good meal or a fine dessert or a fine beverage that leaves that memorable aftertaste in your mouth that we, we savor, that we enjoy either in seconds or minutes after we have tasted it. And thus we are to savor God's word and rejoice in the goodness that it stirs up within us, the joy that it stirs up within us. Today's psalm is, is one of the selections for the second Sunday after Christmas. And I have to chuckle that the lectionary planners, those that cadre of, of 
scholars and the liturgical people, they chose this psalm in the dead of winter because of verses 16 and 17. God spreads snow like it was wool and scatters frost. Who can endure God's freezing cold? But a more theological reason is because this psalm speaks of the building up and the restoration of Jerusalem in fulfillment of God's promises. And the coming of the Son of God, Jesus Christ, is the sign that this has been fulfilled and it has been begun. We also hear echoes of Mary's word that she sung and she spoke her magnificat, her praise as well, in which the Lord lifts up the downtrodden and he casts the wicked to the ground, in which God brings justice and restoration through the coming of his Son. Furthermore, this psalm reminds us that God sends his word out to us. And this word is commonly understood as the written and the spoken word, but now at Christmas, we see that in the birth of Christ, it is the living word, or as the gospel of John putting it so beautifully, the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory. We have seen the glory of Christmas. And in this season of Christmas, we are to praise. We are to praise the God who works throughout history and who works even in nature. God is bringing a new gathering together, bringing those who have been exiled, those who have been waiting and longing for the coming of God's restoration of the kingdom. Admittedly, those people back in the ancient days of when the Psalms took place and when Jesus lived were imagining the restoration of a, a kingdom like a nation state with economic and military and power and dominion. Of course, as we come to understand in reading the Gospels and the beginning of the new church of what Jesus initiated, that this is a different type of kingdom. But it is a kingdom that has a greater power than even we humans can imagine. We praise also because this is the glory of God that is evidenced in nature. The hymn, Joy to the World, which is a favorite Christmas hymn, even though if you look carefully at the verses, it's not written explicitly with Christmas in mind. That's because Isaac Watts took it, those, the key words from Psalm 98, verses 4 to 9. But truly, we see the echoes of heaven and nature singing here in this Psalm 147. And if heaven and nature are to sing God's praise, then we, as humans, are to take part. We praise because heaven and nature are praising. Or we cheer because heaven and nature are cheering. Or we sing because heaven and nature are singing. All of that is part of the Christmas story, not only what was foretold, but also what happened at Jesus' birth. But we live in the echo of that time. So let us join in and continue in that way. And we praise because it is God who is visiting the earth with his word. We see this evident, of course, in the description of how God cares for creation, caring for the ravens in their nest, caring for God's people, providing rain, but also how God visits the earth with his word by bringing his word 
not only in the prophetic sense, but also in the sense, of course, of the living Messiah, Jesus the Christ. Dare we say that it is perhaps part of our rebellion as human creatures if we do not give praise and thanks to God. If we absent ourselves from this endeavor, we diminish God's hope for the unfolding of creation. God's purpose is for, yes, heaven and nature and us to sing the glories of who God is and what God has done for us. And if God's greatest gift to us is truly the birth of his Son as we celebrate at Christmas, then we are called to give our thanks and praise forevermore in time that comes, even as the days of Christmas diminish, not only in the, the 12 days of Christmas, but as we move through the year and we consider other things and we become far from the joy that we build and associate at Christmas time. But our praise can continue. We draw close in being our best, in being in a deeper and fuller communion with God and even with others when we praise. For when we praise, we tap into the spark of the divine creation that has been placed within us by God. Praise is a way for us to use our creativity and then to let it out. It is part of who we are. Besides reminding us yet again of how special and awesome God is, praise reminds us of how special we are. God proclaims his word, we are told, in the closing verses of Psalm 147, to Jacob and Israel. The references to the nations and the peoples that are his chosen people. And God, we are told, hasn't dealt this way with anybody else. Just this nation has been chosen and special. And our lineage is rooted in this. Our lineage is rooted in God's selection of us, for we are the favorite of God. At the beginning of Christ's life and his ministry, it was understood that it would be the Jewish people who would be the ones to benefit. But by the end of his life and the start of the new community of faith that was the Christian church that arose out of the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost and the days that followed, there was a new understanding that really God's largest plan is that all people are welcome. All are worthy of the special blessing of Christmas. All are worthy of the love of God. It is not a limited love. It is a broad, inclusive love. And for those people, us, who understand this and come to this realization that salvation is for all people, then that should stir up within us praise. Praise the Lord because of who the Lord is and because God is worthy, but also praise the Lord because we are included. We are part of the package deal, the package deal of praise, the praise that we bring to God because God has brought to us love that has come down at Christmas in Jesus the Son. Let us pray. Oh Lord, this year as we worship, as we live, help us to offer you the sacrifice of praise, giving glory to your name. Amen. Flowered peace.
I invite you to settle in for a moment of prayer. We understand that we don't have any online requests. 
Lord, I ask that you would keep in mind those who are traveling as the, the holiday break is wrapping up in many communities and certainly in our community as uh, school will be, uh, begin tomorrow. Um, we also want to keep in mind uh, those that are afflicted by COVID as the number of cases rise. And we want to keep in mind those who are ill or dying or hopeless that there might be healing for them. So let us come to God in prayer. Let us pray. Oh God, we bow before you on this day. We ask that you calm the distractions that may afflict us. We ask that you settle our hearts and minds. We ask that you turn our thinking, if only for a brief time, to that which we can give joy and credit and honor and glory to you. And so help us stir up within us those reasons which we have to praise who you are and to praise your name. Admittedly, it may be hard for us. Sometimes that difficulty is of our own making, but sometimes it's something as simple as we just need to set aside those distractions and allow the goodness that is all around us to come to the forefront. And so we do that to you now. We lift up protection and safety for all who travel. We lift up all those who are sick and ill, whether at home or in hospitals with COVID, as cases rise again. We lift up prayers of healing for those whom we name before you that are ill and sick within our own households or families and within our communities, whether they're our school communities, our work communities, our neighborhoods, or this church community of faith. We pray for those that in this time are going through the process of dying and who await the newness of of heaven. We pray for those that are without hope, that are afflicted with depression, that are burdened by that which seems to bring no solace or light. And we lift all of these people up, including ourselves, that we trust that in this new year, your word that says, see, I'm creating a new thing, that that will come true for us in whatever way will be unfolding. So we come to you in this new year with our old fears, but our new desires, old controversies, but new decisions, old weaknesses, but new dreams. And because you are a God of hope, we know that you can create all the possibilities of a future that is full of your love. Because you are a God of forgiveness, we know that you will take the mistakes of our past and bring about reconciliation. And because you are a God of our faith, we enter into your gates with thanksgiving and praise and into your presence with gladness and a joyful noise as we serve and bless you always. And we pray together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. 
Amen. So, this is a special time because it's the beginning Sunday of the new year. And so, one of the ways that I invite you and I like to celebrate in starting the new year out as a person of faith is to begin with an offering for the new year. And I realize that you're not physically here, and so this offering plate and this offering here represents what you can offer, whether it's through our online Vanco e-giving or through a gift that you mail in or drop off at the church if you are here in our local community. But I invite you to take this opportunity to indeed praise God for who God is by making an offering to God especially and make that part of your resolution, not only for this day but for this new year, that this will be something that you will continue to do. And thank you. Let's close our time together in worship with our uh, closing hymn.
May you be blessed wherever you are as you continue with your day, but as you continue with this new year. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.